Let's go to Jake in the I'm Bay. I'm shocked I'm saying Jake, this. Jake in the Bay, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. What's going on, fellas? What's up, Jake? <clears throat> I want to speak to uh, Brock Purdy and his elbow. So I've had uh, three elbow surgeries and a shoulder surgery, including Tommy John. And I can kind of highlight a little bit maybe how he's feeling. It's different from baseball to football. But uh, I think a few things you guys are touching on that I can speak to. Yeah. So the hyperextension where he's kind of sitting there with his elbow bent. Yeah. That's natural. You, you kind of you have that arm brace on for such a long time. So you're used to sitting there like that. And the last thing you feel comfortable doing is the hyperextension mo- motion. Interesting. So when you're fully extending and bending, it's something you're always working on with physical therapy for the next year and a half. And so sitting there with your arm bent, it's just natural. It's going to happen. You may be a little hesitant fully extending just because it's just not a comfortable feeling after Tommy John. That's very interesting. Let me ask you, in terms of throwing, because everyone's saying he's got to build up all the strength, to build up all the strength. I, I do really worry. I do really worry about, like, what's he going to look like after two or three weeks of throwing? Even if he has a couple days off here and there, how's that arm going to feel? Soreness, stuff is like, because anybody who throws anything, baseball, football, whatever, like, you, you get a little fatigued and you get a little sore, and they're throwing a lot in these practices. I'm 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 really interested to see what he's looking like in a couple weeks. Do you buy all the build up the strength stuff if you're throwing as much as these guys have to throw at the beginning of the season? For Tommy John, you're throwing way more than you do at any point during the season or during your career. Gotcha. So like you're doing like a throwing program that you're pushing the limits. Where if you jump out on the field and you get warmed up, you watch these guys throw probably 15, 20 passes and boom, they're jumping into drills. Right? With, with, with Tom and John, you, you have a regimen program where you have to throw a certain amount of balls a day, no matter what. So you're always going to be like pushing it more than you ever would during the season. So he's going to have days where he's going to be sore and the ball's not going to be coming out as good. Or he's going to have days where he feels way better than he ever did early in his career. So, the other thing that you guys were talking about is like accuracy and like his arm. You're you're gonna get your velocity back before you get your accuracy. For sure. So you may jump up on the mound, like for example, I was 95, 96 after TJ, and then I dropped back down to 90, 93, but I was more in control. Interesting. I was, when I was throwing harder, I didn't know when the ball was gone. You don't get that feel. It takes, it takes a little while to get that feel once you get that confidence back, that velocity. So right. he may be a little erratic. But I didn't see erratic. I saw a guy look a little skittish in the pocket is the way I was describe it, which is to be expected. Yeah, it's his first day back, and he hasn't. Has Good call. He hasn't thrown to his teammates. He hasn't gone through OTAs in mini camps. This is literally his first live bullets. But I want to know if anybody out there believes that Brock Purdy's rushing himself back. Now, he did speak after practice, and that was pretty cool. Um, he talked about taking it day by day through rehab. Here's Brock Purdy. Honestly, they gave me a plan. We all sat down, had a plan, and we just stuck to it. And it's it was just get better every single day. You know, once we start throwing, here's the set of throws we got. Here's the amount of volume. Here's the intensity. And then just work your way up, see how you feel after every throwing session, and then just go from there. So there's never been a time in my you know mind where I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be here, here. I've taken it literally one day at a time, one week at a time, and thankful to be where we're at. Said he's working on the point to where his arm doesn't hurt. Let's hear from Purdy. So I've actually worked up to this point, throwing back-to-back days, you know, have a heavy day of throwing, and then the next day maybe tune it down a little bit. But um, I've worked up to get to this point to where my arm doesn't hurt or anything like that. Yeah, I'm at, from throwing and stuff, any quarterback would tell you, hey, I'm going to go ice my arm or do whatever with my arm and do treatment on it. And that's where I'm at. And so, yeah, to answer your question, it's not like killing or anything. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to practice tomorrow or this or that. My arm feels great. Playing 11 on 11. I feel like I'm good enough to play an 11 on 11 football. And so um, we talked about that when I got back here with uh, Shanahan. And basically I told him, I'm like, hey, I feel good enough and confident enough that if I got into an 11 on 11 situation, I can make every throw. So that's the conversation that we had. And they gave me the green light to go out there and, and, and go. And obviously the medical staff told them, and they've been with me this whole time throwing in the off season. They gave Shanahan the green light to, hey, he's good enough to do it. And they've seen me throw. So we've all been on the same page the whole time. But um yeah, I feel good enough to, to play football right now at camp, 11-on-11. 11 11. Still got to work up volume and, and just continue to get better every day. And after all that was said here, he got asked by Grant Cohn, 
about whether or not he's the starter for week number one. This was very, very interesting. No, we haven't had any, you know, kind of conversation like that. It's, hey, how can I be great today at practice? Let's get these reps. Let's get the mental reps and let's continue to grow. You know, obviously what we put on tape last year was great and all, but there's still a lot of, of areas where I have to grow and get better and stuff. So that's just where we're at. We're not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves. So very interesting. Grant Cohen asked, him basically, you know, as Shanahan told him that barring a setback, whether or not he'll start week one. And he says they haven't had that conversation. They haven't had that conversation. Although Brock Purdy is taking the reps with the ones, yeah. he hasn't had that conversation. Does that mean anything to you? It was interesting. Like, I think a lot of people keep talking in, in certainties. Brock is the one no matter what. He's going to play all year. Up there, You get X amount of... I just don't think it's that locked in stone. Trent Williams is a Hall of Fame player. He is your left tackle, and he's going to play left tackle no matter what. Right? Even if he's at 40%. Wouldn't you agree? No doubt. It, Brock just isn't there yet, like in terms of like solidifying himself as as that dude. He's starting at QB one. I, I I don't know, man. Like I I'd be very, 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 very surprised if he gets unseated in camp. But I wouldn't be surprised if a couple games into the season they give a look to someone else. The way that they're rotating and juggling everything, like. I can see where there's a lot of intrigue across the board for a lot of people on the team. And I'm not even talking about coaches. I'm talking about the players. If I'm Brandon Ayuk and I want to get paid, I want the guy who's going to rip me the ball down the field no so that I can get paid. So I can get these numbers, If too. I'm Debo Samuel and I had a right. down year passing last year, I want the ball down the field. I want to get paid again. I want to prove again that I'm an all-pro. So as much as we can talk about... You know, what the guy did last year and won over everybody. At the end of the day, all these guys want whoever's going to be in a position to help them get paid and help them win. So whoever that guy is in five weeks, six weeks, that's who's going to play. No doubt. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMG FM and HD1. San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app at favorite 95.7 The Game for the best and most up-to-date sports coverage. We have shameless shout-outs coming up at 745. Shameless shout-out. Shout-out whoever you want to shout-out. Shout-out your kids. Shout-out going down to 49ers practice. Shout-out to the 49ers for welcoming everybody down there to training camp for the first two days. It was a lot of fun meeting the Roasters yesterday at the team store, the Hilton Hotel, and Santa Clara. They took good care of us. Really fun two-day stretch for 95-70 game and down there in Santa Clara. Uh, I had a lot of fun at practice. Me too. Uh, watching the quarterbacks or whatnot. 888-957-957. Nine five seven zero. You two poll question. It could be the question for the hotline as well. Do you think Brock Purdy is rushing himself back too fast? And just think about why he would rush himself back too fast. Why would Brock Purdy rush himself back too fast? If he was the quote unquote franchise guy, kind of take his time, right? Make sure that the elbow is strong. He could throw on the side field, but he's taking reps with the full team in the second day of training camp. After having surgery, and basically he's, he's been thrown for four and a half months, which is unheard of when you have Tommy John surgery. It is wild. But what's on the line for Brock Purdy? You just said what was on the line for Brendan Ayuk. Money's on the line for Brock Purdy. A lot of money. Money's on the line for Trey Lance. Money's on the line for Sam Darnold. An opportunity to thrive in this offense. If you're a quarterback out there, and you're looking at this situation, you say, boy, I get to hand the ball off to Chris McCaffrey or dump it off to Chris McCaffrey. And if Debo Samuel and Brendan Ayuk on the outside and George Kittle run his seam routes, this is a quarterback's dream. I cannot get let anybody. If I'm Brock Purdy, yeah, I love you, Trey. I love you, Darnold. But I got to take all the reps. You know, would Tom Brady let the backup quarterback no. get a rep? Would Joe Montana let the backup quarterback get a rep? No. Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, the backups are not getting reps. The starters are taking all the reps. And Brock Purdy's like, look, man, I get they got to get these reps, but I got to get mine. Ask Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, unfortunately, never got his job back. Well, and and didn't deserve it. And you know what I mean? And, right. and there was a lot that goes into that. But, like, like that's a great example. You know, it's funny because I, it's not that funny. But it, I initially thought the Niners were rushing back Brock Purdy. The more and more I more I think about it, I think you've been on to this kind of from the beginning. I think that there's an internal push from Brock himself to realize that like they brought in Darnold. Yeah. Trey Lance is still sitting here. They haven't moved off him. My spot is not guaranteed. I got the spot because guys got injured. If I don't 
get back in there and prove myself more, yeah, my spot is in jeopardy. Not only, and it's I agree. It's with fascinating you. because I agree with you. Darnold was a number three overall pick, just like Trey Lance. The NFL, the talent evaluators saw talent in this guy. Well, can it's, it's, and, and, can't and, you see it? I can see some arm talent with That's Sam Darnold. He's big. He's I, strong. I don't like his mechanics. I don't like the way he flicks the ball. But when he does get it out, boy, he comes out. And 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 he can hit a guy downfield. Right. I mean, B, we've watched a lot of practice. I've seen Trey hit a couple guys deep in right. terms of the last couple years. Darnold's the only other guy I've seen somebody yeah. connect 25 yards down the field I, 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 on a frozen rope. I certainly didn't see Jimmy do it at practice no. a lot. I did not. No, so. you see a floater here and there. But the way Darnold ripped that deep comeback, mm -hmm. I can understand if you're one of the coaches going, wow, if we could just get some of the short elements and you incorporate these deep comebacks and these deep outs with that, with those with those intermediate to deep shots, right? Ooh, now our offense is cooking. We're cooking. When is Brock Purdy eligible? For a contract extension, because you signed a four-year deal for so it's after this season. Yeah, uh, all drafted players. It's right. two full seasons. Two full seasons. Now the first round pick. First round, you get you, the fifth year yeah, option. It's different. So, and it wouldn't kick in until year four. Essentially. Exactly, but you could sign it yes. before year three. Yes. So he's on a four-year, three point seven million dollar deal. Total. Total. You don't think Brock Purdy knows that if he plays and plays at a high level. And he helps the Niners go back to the mm -hmm. NFC title game. All of a sudden, the rumors about Kirk Cousins, mm -hmm. whether or not Trey yeah. gets the extension, that's all out the window. Yeah, He's in line to get paid. So not only is this a big year for Sam Dardle, who's on a one-year deal with incentives, he's trying to get yeah. a shot to play. But you're telling me that Brock Purdy, a part of him is saying, I can't give up this job whatsoever. I can't afford to not be suited up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in week number one and give Kyle Shanahan a chance to look at one of these other quarterbacks and see what they do within this offense. Who's to say Brock Purdy gets that job back? Again, we watched Alex Smith come off one of the most prolific Monday Night Football games we've ever seen. They take the bye week, plays the Rams, suffers a concussion, and he never got his job back. You brought up Tyrod Taylor. It's a great point. Tyrod Taylor. What's the, chart, what's the starter in San Diego or L.A.? All of a sudden, he gets scratched late because they punctured his lug. Herbert comes in against the Chiefs, and you're like, oh, my God, this guy is ready. And Tyron was never a charger ever good. Uh, how never about played. Case Keenum? Case Keenum goes 11-3 and three out of nowhere, okay? 22 touchdowns, seven interceptions with Minnesota. The Minnesota Miracle. And then goes to Denver in the offseason to cash in. I mean, that... Like, look at his career. That's the outlier, and he he took advantage of it. Carson big time. Wentz, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts. I mean, that's a good call. You know, you know. So Nick Foles. So so you're telling me that Brock Purdy, a look, even though he had that great run last season, it's a what have you done for me lately league, and especially with Kyle Shanahan. I mean, think about Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo. If Purdy wasn't playing yesterday, and you're sitting there and you're Purdy and you're watching what's going on. Wouldn't you feel the internal pressure to come back watching Darnold rip it and build synergy with, with the Absolutely. other guys? Absolutely. I would. So, 